All right, what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're going to do an example problem applying the principle of linear impulse and momentum, what I like to call P L I M P and Mo. So I have a soccer ball that's moving at five meters per second on the ground and it gets kicked. And when the ball leaves the player's foot, the ball travels with the speed of 20 meters per second at the angle that I'm going to show you in the figure next to end. And the foot and the ball are in contact for about 0.02 seconds. All right, that's about as good as my soccer ball is going to get. And this ball is moving at five meters per second for my before the soccer player's foot hits it and it's horizontal and we'll have a proper kick with the laces of the foot all right well there's my soccer ball and my foot making contact with the ball and when it after impact my the velocity of the ball is 20 meters per second and the angle here is 30 degrees and we'll call this v1 for before and v2 for after and what i want to find in this problem is the magnitude and direction of the average impulsive force from my foot on the ball all right so now before we apply the principle of linear impulse and momentum let's just make sure that we're all on the same page here i'm going to write out this principle real fast and and the idea in, in most textbooks what you'll see is that the momentum at one plus the sum of all the impulses, which is this integral of F dt, is equal to the momentum at two. And it's important to note this is a vector equation. So what we can do with this vector equation is break it up into components depending on the coordinate system that I'm using. So you might break this equation up into X, Y, and Z components. So, so what you really see here in 2D would be two equations and in 3D, three possible equations. Another way that I like to look at it is that, you know, I have a particle that has a, a state of momentum and then all these external forces or impulses are applied. And, it, and really, it's like a force for a certain a specific duration of time, you know, and I always think of like a punch. When you punch something, it makes contact for maybe a split second or so. It imparts a force or an impulse and it changes the momentum or the direction. And so the first thing I'll do for this problem when I apply this is I like to draw the schematic of the particle that I'm looking at. And in this case, it would be this soccer ball. What I want to do is draw a schematic that matches my equation. Initially, I have my soccer ball here. It has a velocity towards the left plus the impulse that this particle receives, which is some force from my foot here, this F for a certain duration of time. So I'm going to call this F dt. And it has an unknown angle, which I will just call beta. And after that kick or that contact, with my foot, the soccer ball will have a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. And I know what the mass of my my soccer ball is. I do know, and you know, looking at FIFA and the the mass of the soccer ball that I'm using is 0.43 kilograms. All right, so I have my schematic that looks like my equation. I know the mass of my soccer ball. Here's my momentum at one the impulse, and then my momentum at two. And I'm going to say, I'm going to establish a coordinate system. I'm going to say this is my positive x direction or my positive horizontal, and my positive vertical direction is upwards. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and write, apply the principle of linear impulse and momentum, or P-L-I-M-P and -P for in each component. So I'll start with the horizontal direction, and I'll say positive to the right. And so here, my momentum in the horizontal direction for here, M1, MV1, would just be the mass of the soccer ball, V1. And this is negative because my velocity is pointing towards the left with a magnitude of 5 meters per second. Plus, I would have the impulse from times T1 to T2 the force of that impulse dt and the horizontal component of this force would be the x component of this force here and that would be fx dt and really fx is just f cosine of theta and this is equal to my horizontal component of momentum at stage two 
which would be mv2 cosine of 30 degrees and it's positive because my horizontal component is going to the right and now i write my vertical component equation my vertical positive i have no velocity in the vertical direction so no momentum in the vertical direction here at stage one if you will so that's just zero plus i would have here t1 the t2 F, the y component of this force, dt, which would just be f sine theta. And again, it's positive because I'm assuming that it's pointing upwards, is equal to mv2 sine of 30 degrees. And the way I've set this up, I have, I know the mass, I know the velocity at 1, I know the mass and the velocity at 2, boom, boom. So my only two unknowns are the magnitude of the force and this angle theta and really i know the time t1 to t2 because the total duration of time is 0 0.02 seconds what i'm assuming here is that this force is constant and not dependent of time because i'm taking an average value of the impulse so this force again is not dependent on time here time t1 is the point when my when my foot just makes contact so i'll call that zero and then when my foot leaves the ball it's 0.02 seconds and same here zero and 0.02 seconds and so again i, I i'm left with two equations two unknowns all i gotta do is substitute and solve so I'm just going to plug and chug numbers into each equation here. We're assuming for the shape of this force function as a function of time, we're just assuming that the impulse term looks like this. And this integral here represents the area under the force, and this is that area is called the impulse. Because this is constant here, this force, we're taking an average value, so we're assuming it's constant, it's independent of time, and when I do this integral, it's a pretty straightforward. And now all I gotta do is solve two equations and two unknowns. So from this equation, I get that F is equal to, and if I take this and I substitute this into the second equation here, I will get, and here we know that this sine theta, cos theta, that is just tangent theta. And if I take the inverse tangent, this will tell me that theta, the angle at which the ball is being kicked with that force is 24.13 degrees. And I can just take this theta, plug it back into this equation over here, into one of the equations, I can find my force. Is 525.95 newtons. And so for my final answer, you know, you might write something like this. You might write that the force in terms of vector notation, the force from my foot onto the ball, the average impulsive force is 525.95 newtons at an angle of 24.13 degrees from the horizontal. All right, hopefully that was a useful example of using the principle of linear impulse and momentum. Take it easy. Structure.